all wherever you're watching from from across the country in the uk if you're watching from outside the uk welcome to this wonderful uh evening and i hope you're all well and enjoying your sunday my name is benjamin hamandisha and i am your facilitator slash host uh for today's discussion around mental health in men and with me i've got two very wonderful guests uh, who are experts and leaders and professionals uh, in various capacities um by the name of michael tabirade michael i hope i hope i, pr I pronounced your surname right you did it perfectly fine thank you <laughs> cheers and david midzi so i'll allow them to introduce, introduce themselves shortly uh but i hope you guys are going to engage with us and draw as many lessons as you can uh, as we try to address this uh, very necessary conversation around mental health amongst black men or amongst men. Um, so without wasting much time, because I want us to get into the meat of the conversation, I don't want to um, spend too much time on the preliminaries. Um, Michael, I'd like you to introduce yourself first um, and then hand it over back to me and then, I, and then I'll hand it over to David. Tell us, so, so, tell us who you are and what you do. Um, both in your day-to-day -day work as well as what you do in relation to the specific subject discussing today. Cool, no problem. So my name is Michael Tabradi. So in my day-to-day, -day, I'm an independent consultant working for various public sector healthcare, you know, groups and organizations such as the Department of Health and Social Care and the UK Health Security Agency as well. I've spent about 11 years working for the NHS in various capacities such as commissioning, implementation, etc. And uh, pretty much alongside that, I'm founder of the organization known as the Mastery Group, which questions how good do you want to be? And it focuses on professional and personal development for self-starters and ambitious professional, mainly millennials, but it, it outreaches to different individuals as well. And there, you know, you're learning things around emotional intelligence, resilience, confidence, um, how to subscribe to an entrepreneur on career mindset as well. And so a lot of my work is focused on allowing people to understand that they're more than their situation, allowing under, uh, people to understand that they're not defined by the conditions that they're in. Um, so that's my contribution towards mental health. Recently, part of an initiative called Breathe Union, which aims to focus on supporting students within universities, um, really sort of like improve their mental health and leadership. So trying to get a few contracts in that space, as well as volunteering as well in those different areas. So that's a little bit about me and how I contribute into this whole sort of space of mental health. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Michael. No problem. Uh, a very wonderful uh, and eloquent gentleman who does some significant work uh, and incredible leader. Thank you. Uh, next, uh, David, would you like to introduce yourself and what you do in your day to day, um, as well as what you do specifically around men and mental health? Hi everyone. Uh, thanks, Benji, for for hosting us today. Um, I I am a pastor in a local church uh, called Living Faith. So pretty much that's what I do most of the time. Um, I also run a marriage counseling uh, ministry. So most of the times uh, I'm in the office uh, dealing with different issues family issues, marital issues, and counseling people. Um, we run men, men, men workshops where we, we, we are sitting with men and having conferences and dealing with men issues as well. Um, professionally, I'm a mechanical engineer. So that, that's my, my background, automotive and aerospace engineering. Um, I, I'm honored to be here today. Um, when, when I heard about Michael, I, I, I was excited to be here. Uh, to sit and also learn about these issues, and uh, that's why I'm here today. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Uh, it's, uh, it's amazing to have a balance of uh, someone who's coming from the corporate space and, and, and also someone who's coming from a community and clergy background. I think it, it adds to the holistic approach that we need, especially seeing that a lot of our um, audience and men within our community also come from the uh, religious space. So I think having someone uh, like David from the religious space helps us unpack and demystify some of those um, stigmas and misconceptions around mental health. And I'm excited to get into the conversation today. Um, so let's get straight into the meat. Um, uh, I think just to build a bit of context to our listeners and viewers around mental health, it goes without saying that mental health 
is one of the most significant challenges that every individual faces. Uh, it doesn't matter how old you are, what gender you are, what uh, ethnic background you're from. At some point, everyone is going to face a mental health challenges, a mental health challenge of sorts. Uh, so I think the question is less about can you ever experience mental health challenges. The, the question should be how do you deal with the challenges that come your way? Uh, and I believe how you deal with those challenges also determines you know, the extent to which you will face some of these mental health challenges. So just to give a bit of a background, um, to let people know that this thing is very common within the Black and African community, I'll read just a, a short uh, statistical research just to paint a bit of a uh, picture. So over, overall statistics show that Black men are 10 times more likely than white men to experience such a disorder, mental health disorders. Um, a special issue of race and class published in January 2021 points to the particular ways in which mental health of BME people and migrants and refugees uh, can be affected. Um, uh, the Mental Health Foundation suggests that immigrants and asylum seekers are more likely to experience poor mental health than the local population. One 2018 study, for example, found that non-European immigrant women, including South African and Asian and men, were a particularly high risk group from suicide attempts. Uh, and I'm sure we can all attest to this. Uh, in, in recent years, in the last five or so years, we've seen a more prevalent pattern around suicide from black men. And it comes from the pressures we face from day-to-day -day life. So I think before we get into the technical mental health discussion, um, could you, uh, let me start with Michael. Could you just tell us, uh, your understanding of what mental health is, uh, you know, generally, uh, and then break it down in, in the second part to what your understanding of mental health illness is. I, I believe they're not really synonymous all the time. Uh, they're very similar, but just what mental health is and what mental health illness or mental health challenges are to you, just to paint a picture for us. Yeah. So I will break it down like this. So in my mind, mental deals with the capacity of one's mind, which involves their emotional and psychological well-being. So if we think about what well-being is, well-being talks about a state. And so that's what the health part is. So if we think about health, it is a spectrum of poor and rich, good and bad. So in this state, your mental health describes your emotional and psychological well-being or state of beingness, so to speak. How, how well are you doing? That's what mental health describes in terms of a word. If we talk about mental health illness, we're talking about something that's more clinical by nature that can be observed, that, that is, um, again, clinical and observable, like I stated before. So these are things like clinical depression. Uh, these are things like uh, severe anxiety. Um, so these are all things that link to mental health. And again, if we're talking, we, we don't need to get into triggers, but sometimes we can mistaken a sense of stress for a mental health condition but that's really the environment or circumstances that cause you to react a certain way it's how we respond to those different things so just to be clear mental health talks about the state of our well-beingness in terms of psychological and emotional well-being mental health illness talks about a clinical poor state of health described by some of those factors Great. Thank you very much. Um, and David, um, as we move the conversation forward, could you um, give us your understanding of what are some of the causative factors uh, that lead to mental health challenges amongst men? Uh, and also, I guess you can also just paint a bit of a picture. Um, any comments on what Michael said around uh, the definition of mental health, if you have any uh, differing views or different perspective. Uh, but I want you to lean more towards the positive factors uh, that lead to these challenges that most men face. Yeah, I, I subscribe to what Michael is saying and the definition. Uh, I would also add uh, the, the social aspect of it. So it's the psychological, the, the emotional, uh, and the social well-being um, that I can add to uh, what, what he has said. And uh, going on to the factors that cause um, that, you, you, you'll find if we look at the men, um, particularly here, uh, the black man, like you said, uh, 
initially the first generation or the immigrant or one that is an asylum seeker, the pressures that one goes through, it, it, it causes a breakdown. It causes him to um, go through so much stress and uh, emotional breakdown and psychological breakdown. How am I going to do this? How am I going to feed? How am I going to have a roof over my head? Is this going to come to an end? So all, all those pressures come to play those things cause uh, us men to go through pressures. And then culture itself, um, th th there are some things culturally, men are expected to be this, they're expected to do that. And if you feel you're not measuring up uh, to those expectations, it powers the pressure on your mental well-being and it, it, it can crush you. Wow, um, I love your mention again of the word pressure. It's a, it's a word that's been resonating in my mind for, you know, for quite a bit. And when you look at the mental health challenges, uh, for example, depression is one of the biggest symptoms of mental health challenges uh, that people face. And if you do like a word study, you find that depression, there is the word press within depression. And I believe uh, it also uh, is synonymous with um, the word pressure. Right. So I want us to just dwell on pressure there. Uh, for mm. a minute. Uh, you mentioned a couple of examples, uh, but I want us to dwell on where do these pressures stem from? And are some of these pressures justified that we put on ourselves as men and that society puts on men? Are they justified? Because sometimes we don't know the balance between, um, you know, sometimes we don't know the, the line uh, uh, where you cross from being a man, you know, and not being a man. So at what point can a man say, you know, this is too much pressure for me. Uh, I think these are my limits. So uh, David, just um, hammer in again on pressure. Uh, I feel like we need to let it be known to people that sometimes the pressure gets real. So just your understanding of pressure, the different types of pressure, obviously uh, you mentioned social pressures, uh, but could you also mention some of the um, cultural pressures as well um, that lead to men being stuck um, and diving into mental health challenges? There are many pressures, Benji. Uh, it could be economic factors. Um, the economy itself can exert so much pressure on you and you can't carry the weight of that which is expected of you, um, expected of you by the society, um, by your f female counterparts, yeah. uh, by the family, uh, by society at large. Um, th their expectations, whether um, those expectations uh, are spelled out or they are silent, we, we, we have so many pressures as men. So it, it can be economic, it, it could be educational. Uh, th there are some men that are under pressure because they feel they are not educated enough uh, just, just the pressure of being amongst men that you, you feel they are well to do, they are going somewhere and you are comparing yourself with other people, uh, mm -hmm. it can exert so much pressure on you. Um, so pressures come from many different facets of life. Thank you for that. Um, I know it sounded basic, but I just, I feel especially for uh, women that are watching, uh, just to understand, because sometimes uh, a lot of these things are normalized as expectations, but sometimes uh, when they're not handled correctly, we push men uh, in a direction that they shouldn't be in because of these pressures. Um, it it and, might not be expectation, Benji. It might yeah. not be expectation. Uh, some, some of the things are verbalized. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If, if, if you are married, you, you can be compared. Yeah. Yeah. So, so your wife is telling you, Benji is doing well, man, Dave. <laughs> yeah, Dave. Benji yeah. is only uh, a young man, right? And, mm -hmm. and all these years that you have lived on earth, look at what Benji has done, it's pressure that is coming. And uh, if you allow that, and it can crush you. Yeah. So Michael, I'm going to make a comment on what David said, and I want you to sort of run off the back of this. Um, so both pressure, you know, from what you mentioned about pressure that is verbalized and not verbalized, I feel one of the most important things that men need to learn to do for themselves uh, is to be kind to yourself, you know, uh, and understand that you are running your own race in your own lane at your own pace. And sometimes when things don't go according to plan, mm -hmm. uh, you know, when the, for example, th there are some things that are actually beyond your control. For example, we're just going into a recession now. Mm -hmm. uh, we just come from COVID-19. There are many things that are beyond our control. 
uh, I, th I think it is important for people to be kind to themselves and understand that uh, I'm not responsible for events that I can't control. Mm. Um, uh, what do you make of the importance of being kind to yourself? Not just being kind to yourself. Uh, how do the conversations that we have with ourselves as men uh, impact on our mental health? Um, yeah, mental health stability. That's a very great question because we do have conversations with ourselves whether we realize it or not. And those conversations didn't initially necessarily stem from us. So in psychology, there's this whole concept known as introjection. So introjection is where you are embedding habits, beliefs, and values from significant people, teachers, parents, et cetera, et cetera. And so they're creating these societal norms, these traditions, these cultures, these expectations, whether you realize it or not. And so what we have to do as human beings, but in this conversation as men, is realize are these introjections serving us? And that's called what they call building a psychological muscle. You're moving from a state of subjectivity where you're just taking it for face value, but being more objective about it. Why am I saying all of this? That objectivity is where that growth lies. You get to a level of maturity because once you understand that these expectations are not realistic for your version of your reality in your life, then that's where that kindness comes in. It has to come in that way. But if you're blind to that space, and if you're blind to those scripts and schemas that set the rules in your mind in terms of what you must and shouldn't do, then that kindness doesn't creep in. Now, if you're not aware of these concepts, then the only other ways you're going to really be uh, cognizant of being kind to yourself is coming to events like this, having the right level of mentorship or sense of coaching or speaking or listening to the right sort of stuff. You know, you mentioned the level of control and it's interesting. There's this concept known as the locus of control. And it states that when things are not working out, we are reactive by nature. And in order for us to better deal with situations, we need to have a level of proactivity. And that proactivity stems into that idea of being kind. So what does kindness do? Kindness means that you're able to recognize that actually there's no real expectation. Kindness understands that and this is contentious, but I'll say it anyway, because I think it's the right thing to say. There are no real rules that exist in life. And what I mean by that is good and bad is relative to our experience based on what we believe and what we understand. And so understanding that concept, you come to a point of deciding, OK, what is truly important to me as a person? What is truly important to me? Not what is expected of me or what is important to me, because that frames the basis of what I, you know, Hell calls me Mr. Values. I talk about this a lot. It's this whole idea of values, you know, um, what is important to me and how do I make decisions? Because decisions determine your destination and your destination determines your destiny, so to speak. And so that, that, that's, that's, that's how I see that whole, whole framework is understanding the model, but realizing that we need to frame our own model. It takes time to do, but you have to give yourself that time and lower the expectations. The only last thing I'll say about that is, by nature, there for, for, for many men, ego gets in the way. And ego is a good and bad thing. Good in the sense that we need ego to achieve. Bad because it can make us blind to the realities of life. And so it's about balancing that ego as well and understanding, okay, it's useful for achievement, but to what end? Not to the point that I damage my social, emotional, and psychological well-being. And that's when you can, you can, you, you know to what end because you can start to see signs. This may be fatigue. This may be a sense of burnout. This may be a sense of anxiety. You're not feeling yourself when you're speaking to different people. This could be a, a lack of self esteem or lack of confidence. Um, so I know I'm rambling on a bit, but yeah, th those are the ideas that come to mind. Wonderful. Um, thank you for that. Uh, David, I want you to touch on um, how. If, okay, so if men don't really address or seek help for their mental health challenges, uh, can you touch on how that impacts on their world in terms of their family, their friends? Because I think sometimes um, selfish thinking um, is one of the things that keeps men trapped and suffering in silence, you know? Um, but I believe that uh, if, if men, especially men who lead families, not just by virtue of being married, uh, for example, you might not be married, but if you're a son, you still lead a family, you're still responsible. Um, 
how does um, a man's mental health impact on his family and his immediate world and community and etc yeah just touch on that. yeah um because we, we we take it that you are you are a leader as a man and you have a following um your mental health uh, affects those that are around you uh whether it's your immediate family uh your friends uh your workmates um whatever space you find yourself in your mental health is not good um it filters down to everyone that is around you um so if if i have an ill mental health myself um it affects naomi it affects shama because they can see i'm supposed to be doing this i'm supposed to be leading i'm supposed to be showing the example but um i am not measuring up to what i am supposed to be um because there there has to be a balance between expectations and the real me um of course i need to be kind to myself but i don't need to be so kind at the expense of those that are around me yeah so so then the mental health of of a man affects many things talk about me as a pastor if my mental health is not good it affects those that i am leading i i i have insecurities i have some fears that are gripping me some stresses that are you know gripping me that i don't rise to be who i'm supposed to be as a, as as a pastor as a counselor as uh, as a family man that really affects everything i cannot produce financially i cannot produce mentally i cannot because i am affected the, the mental health of a man uh, then needs to be something that we take time to work on and really make sure we work out in order to improve our mental health now wonderful thank you thank you for that i, th- I think it's it's important for people to know that especially uh, when you need like you said and if your world crumbles slowly you know you can't function uh, at your best optimum level so thank you for that i think it's very important for men to know that especially when you're leading families and organize uh, it's very important to address it um uh, let's talk about the stigma around seeking professional help you know with mental health um challenges i think for a long time in our communities uh where they speak of religious organizations or just social circles um we've never really embraced uh options of going to seek uh professional and medical help whether it's going to see your gp for antidepressants or going to see uh a counselor uh, or a therapist or a psychotherapist or a psychologist um what do you think um and and this is for you Michael and David you can chime in on this as well um what what do you think is the significance of us engaging with uh professional help than just sitting and dealing with it by ourselves and i know sometimes even things like conversations with friends can help address mental health challenges but um what are the true benefits and values of seeking professional help than trying to address uh your challenges by yourself. Yeah, I mean to be honest you said it there they're professionals. They're trained to find the markers, they're trained to understand the signs and they're trained to have open and vulnerable conversations with you that aim to lead you towards, you know, coping with these different conditions. Um I mean a friend could do that to some degree, but they're not trained in that space. I mean if we're thinking about the spectrum of therapy coaching and or mentoring you know a friend may act more as a mentor in the sense that they may be telling you to do a lot of stuff but sometimes you just need someone to listen to what you're saying and assimilate that information against a study a framework um known ways to deal with that situation to open you up to develop coping mechanisms to help you um so seeking professional help is very important you know um but i i think it also stems from just being comfortable being open i mean sometimes men can be quite transactional in nature it's just information swap you know just like how you do business whereas we need to have more transformational conversations that rely around building good levels of trust and or vulnerability as well and it, i think it's the vulnerability thing that um that affects men the most because it may signify a level of weakness um which is not true um there is a strength in being vulnerable and again therapist a trained therapist can help you navigate through those different spaces thank you very much uh and david i want to come to you to um uh, along the same questions as well but uh, uh coming from your religious 
uh, and church leadership perspective. Um, uh, and and I want you to, and I want you to speak to Christian leaders on is there a way we can is there a way churches and leaders can engage with mental health professionals and sort of strike that balance? Uh, do you think mental health professionals and the church can work together instead of being seen as two contradictory and two opposing sources of help and support? Um, I think maybe for, for, for ages, the, the, the church did not quickly embrace uh, professional help um, because of the stigma of, you know, if, if, if you sought professional help, it's like you have failed spiritually when actually you have not failed spiritually. Uh, we, we have mentors in different areas of life. So you need a business mentor, you, you, you need uh, an accounting mentor, you need uh, different mentors for different things. For our mental well-being, we, we need professional people that can work on our mental health and help us to be strong, help us. Uh, j- just like somebody going to the gym that is working out your physical body, we, we, we need our mental health uh, to do. Uh, we need to go to the professionals for us to, to be helping in that particular area. In, in the ministry, I, I have um, mental health professionals. When, when people come to me, I, I refer them, uh, can you have time with so-and-so? Because I know they need this. They don't need prayer, but they need their mental health um, for, 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 for some coaching, some mentoring, so, so that they know how to develop mental fortitude. Because if the mental health is not worked on, circumstances that come in life can break you down. But you need the coaching. You need to be trained. You need professional people to work with you. So it's, 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 it's not demonic. You are not out of this, but you are spiritual to know that I need this, I need this. God has given us the wisdom. So we, we need to utilize that. Wonderful. Thank you very much. So I'm going to take a little bit of a commercial break. Um, Pell, could you kindly play for us um, a video that we had ready uh, just a two minute video uh, just for people to take a breather because uh, I think we've discussed a lot of deep stuff uh, and once that's this clip is done in two minutes then we'll get back to the last part of our conversation. Pearl whenever you're ready uh, could you kindly sit by playing that video for us. Thank you very much for that, pal. 
um i hope everybody uh got some insightful lessons uh you know from that clip uh, one of the things that struck out for me are those labels you know uh that were seen on those men's shirts and one of the important things i took on from there was those labels were not put in one day you know, those labels were built over time um so i think it's important that people are are mindful number one of labels and conversations they have with themselves as well as uh labels uh, that we put on other people um you know some things uh we we may say uh in passing maybe in a humorous way thinking it's it's humorous um some things we may say to other men thinking that it's perfectly normal but i think uh the key takeaway i want people to have is be mindful of, of how you engage with other people especially men um use words that build them up because the world as it is is you know is is given has given us enough tons of bricks to pull us down so the words and conversations you have let them build and give life to men um so the next part i want us to get into is okay number one one of the things i also want us to embrace as men is to understand that it's okay not to be okay i think um we should understand that our mental health is not too different from our physical health the only difference is one is visible the other is not so visible but just like you can catch a cold every now and then um you can also catch stress you know every now and then you can also catch depression every now and then i believe that mental health challenges uh, or mental health illness is not something you can completely eradicate because it comes in different shapes sizes and forms and manifests itself in different ways they are very more overt and uh, complex uh, expressions of mental health like psychosis um you know and etc but there are some very subtle uh, expressions of it like stress depression anxiety so some of those things we face from time to time on an event to event basis so number one just understand that it's okay not to be okay and whenever you find yourself in a dark tunnel there's always light at the end of the tunnel and whatever situation you're going through it's not permanent so that's just some um a moment of encouragement for some men uh and women that are listening out there uh, that it's okay not to be okay so uh, the next question i have for you gentlemen uh i want to start with um david here how can we train ourselves to be more engaging and supportive towards other men's mental health? Uh, for example, in our friendship circles, in our community circles, how can I help uh, my next friend in their mental health challenges even before they come to me? How can I initiate uh, a conversation around mental health and how can I initiate support for another brother? Because some brothers are not always um willing and forthcoming to be the first person to address their own challenges uh, but how can we be more prompting how can we be more engaging and encouraging to our brothers um i i believe it's relational um where you 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 start the conversation yourself um and being honest um with your journey yourself um i i've discovered that anybody that that is vulnerable to other people you you open a door that they can be vulnerable to you um most of the times us as men we we, we want to present a front like everything is together all the time i am not facing any challenges and we want to speak big things about ourselves which is not a true reflection of what is in the inside when they see or when they hear uh about me the challenges that i have gone through the mental health issues that that i am dealing with also the 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 fears that i face this stress that i have gone through um in, in my sessions that i deal with with people when i give personal examples i see people light up and before you know it they are going to tell you even more things about themselves because you have been vulnerable yourself um to help the situation i think as men let's be honest let's not put a front Let, let's not show that everything is together all the time let, let, let's expose uh, even the weakest points in our lives it it helps us uh and helps other men to know that i am not down and out after all i am not the only one going through this after all i thought i was the worst one uh looks like most people are going through it if benji is going through it and michael is going through it i thought i was the only one Th that opens a door where men can be free 
than to relate knowing that I'm not the only one that is sinking in this sea. Thank you very much. Uh, Michael, same question. Um, you know, how can we be more supportive, engaging and encouraging to our fellow brothers? I think uh, Pastor David has said it very well. Um, it's starting to have honest conversations. I think that's that's one thing. And um, I think you could argue more importantly is being honest to ourselves first. Um, you know, there's this phrase that I have, which is brutal honesty and loving honesty. And can't be afraid of the situation you're in right now because if you can acknowledge where you are and then second step open up to others and express what situation you're in then that builds a sense of trust and rapport um i think also if someone's coming to you and you're not initiating it i think taking them seriously sometimes as men we can be a bit joking about it or we don't necessarily sort of like cater towards the needs of the person expressing themselves and so the basis of that is knowing how to hold a great conversation and it comes back to coaching 101 in my mind um having you know utilizing empowering questions um deep listening um utilizing inner supervision as well feedback so confirming what people are saying through summary so they un so they feel like they're being listened to so there is a subtlety in terms of how we approach our behaviors as well to make people feel like they're being listened to and a lot of that's done not just verbally but physically as well you can see these nuances um, and again you can engage with these conversations through activity whether this is through games sporting events you know business but not always holding it down to business um, social activities uh, praise and worship there, there are all opportunities to do this so if there are activities that are being held with men, find an opportunity afterwards to just break it down and see how they're doing. Simple question, how's it going? You know, uh, maybe you can start to give them a sense of trust to open them up. Thank you very much. Um, Michael, uh, you, you actually mentioned an interesting point. You said just asking them how they're doing. I think, uh, you know, when we greet each other, usually we say, how are you? You know, and the immediate subconscious response, oh, I'm doing well. Or if you're, you know, if you're a church person, I'm blessed, you know, something like that. But <laughs> I think sometimes uh, to actually pause and ask that question again in a conversation, no, but really, David, how are you? you know, how, how are kids at home? Yes, man. I was, you know, that simple, those simple three words, I think they are some of the most powerful ways in which you can actually support each other and not only ask questions to respond, but ask questions to actually have a deeper understanding of what the next person is going through. So thank you for that. I, I totally agree and, and support what you said. Uh, and what are some of the, um, uh, what are some of your own personal habits or actions you've taken to build your own mental health and improve your own mental health um in you know in a few minutes um just habits and um even regimens that you have in place to make sure that your mind is is performing its best mm -hmm. is this me or... yes uh, okay so let me start with david and then, and then come back to you michael okay. sorry yeah I, I have built my my circle of confidence uh, that that i speak to about issues that i'm facing and things that i'm going through emotions that i'm going through. so i speak to those uh, it, 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 it helps me and anytime that I have pressing issues and I speak to my circle, um, I, I feel the weight um, offloaded. Yeah, so, so I, I, that's my coping mechanism. Yep. Of course, I, I have Naomi with me, but I have other boys that, that, that are in my circle that, yeah. that I speak to. Yes. Yeah. No, wonderful. So Thank for you. me, that's, that's a coping mechanism for me. That's great. Thank you very much. Yeah. Michael? Yeah, I mean, I, I have a number of um, mechanisms. So that's definitely one of them, speaking to people who I feel like will listen to me authentically and genuinely. There has to be that level. But I know that I get a sense of objectivity as well. Uh, number two, there's also masterminds that I have. And hearing, like, hearing people speak and talk about their challenges and stuff in a collective fashion also gives me a sense of motivation as well and a knowingness that, I'm not by myself, so that's very useful. Um, also, and I started this again recently, solid for about a month and a half, going to sleep early and waking up early and going to the gym. That's the first, one of the first things I do. And the reason why I say that is because I know we have a distinction between mental and physical health, but I think it's the same thing. 
if you improve your physical health in the right with the right sort of mindset, you improve your sense of mental health. It doesn't remove things, but you have better ways of building a capacity of resilience because of how your body's dealing with stuff. And I guess the last thing is through, uh, I'm going to call it collectively affirmations. So that could go under the, the form of mirror work, where sometimes I'm looking at myself in the mirror and exposing some of the vulnerabilities or through prayer, speak, like praying out loud. I think that helps. There's also um, listening and watching to things that will induce my mind a certain way. Um, and I think when I have that organic rhythm, it helps me build that capacity. Thank you. I, I totally agree um, uh, with all of what you said. And if I was asked the same question, I would exactly summarize what you said. Because for me, I believe one of the key things to my mental health stability, you know, um, eating healthy, you know, eating well, um, sleeping on time, rest is underestimated. Rest is essential. Um, and help, rest allows you to focus, you know, and to have renewed energy to tackle the day forward. And uh, also conversations with people that I trust, you know, like you said, a trusted circle, but also more importantly, conversations with myself. I believe it's conversations that we have with ourselves that really shape uh, the outcomes of our life. And I'll thank you for those very practical steps. And I hope those people who are watching and listening um, wrote notes. If there's anything I want you to write down is those four to five things we've just mentioned on how to improve your mental health. And these are things you don't do once in a while. These have to be daily decisions that you make. You, you know, you have to be intentional about your mental health because the world, um, you know, if the world is some sort of force coming from a spiritual background, um, you know, if the world has a force against you, you also need to be very intentional to fight back, you know, on the pressures and the challenges of life that come your way. Uh, and uh, one of the things I'm going to mention before we round off, so I think we did a, a good job of covering what mental health is, what mental health illness is, um, and how we can address some of our mental health challenges. But uh, to, add, uh, to add another layer to that practical step, for anyone who's watching uh, or listening or uh, who may be going through mental health challenges themselves or have a friend or family that is going through mental health challenges, um, you know, in addition to the five things we've just mentioned now, uh, you should, uh, you may want to consider approaching uh, these certain people. Um, first of all, your GP uh, is, you know, is a good start just to go and have a conversation with. Uh, they might not solve all your problems, but they are, they'll be very good in, in leading you towards the right direction or where you can get the best support. So feel free to reach out to your GP. And one of the wonderful things about GPs uh, as as any other professional, they uh, they respect client or patient confidentiality in that sense. So uh, if you're too worried about going to your brother or your sister or your friend, uh, a GP is a good person to talk to as a start. Uh, as well as visiting therapists, um, you can Google the nearest therapists in your area, uh, the nearest psychotherapists, um, you know, psychologists. However you know, depending on the complexity of your issue. But I think that's a good starting point. Uh, also, the NHS provides mental health support. So you can call them and you can actually call NHS uh, the triple one emergency line. So triple one, 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 one for any mental health support that, that you may be in need of. Um, there's also another organization called Association of Christian Counselors. Um, you can Google them and you can find them. I'll say it again, Association of Christian Counselors or ACC. They'll be very good. I've, I've heard of, of another charity that provides brilliant mental health support called Samaritans. Uh, Samaritans are very good. And yeah, I think between those uh, organizations, as well as your friends, your family, your trusted circle, uh, and sometimes it might not be choosing one. Sometimes it's embracing all those different sources of help and you know using them coherently. Uh, you can better improve your mental health. So don't suffer alone and know that it's okay not to be okay. Um, you know, we've come to the end of our talk, uh, gentlemen, but thank you very much, Michael and David. But before we go, um, I want you to give your closing remarks, um, you know, uh, in a couple of minutes uh, on, you know, just your thoughts around mental health or your encouragement. I, I, I think maybe let's end on an encouraging note. Um, I want you to imagine you're speaking to 
a man on the brink um, of suicide, a man who's just lost his job. You know, we're, we're entering another recession. Uh, we don't know when it's going to end. We're in the middle of a war. We've just come from a COVID pandemic. It's like we're coming from one um, global situation onto the next. It's a very challenging time. So I want you to speak to a brother out there watching or listening uh, who's on the brink of killing themselves, who's, who's on the brink of leaving their family, who's on the brink of giving up. I want you to inject hope into their soul. Uh, in a couple of minutes as you close. And also, if you can, uh, in your closing, just tell the people uh, where they can find you, where they can get in touch with you, your websites, your Facebook pages. Uh, and Michael, uh, this one's specifically for you. I know that you are an author of some books. If you can also mention some of the books and the work you've done, um, as well as Pastor David, any work that you've done or have out there, even if it's not books, some seminars that you have coming up, just let people know where they can get in touch with you. So two things, encourage people, uh, and let them know where they, where they can connect with you. Uh, so I'll start with Michael. Yeah, so I want you guys to understand that you are more than your situation. Whatever you're suffering right now, whatever stresses are coming in your way, these things will pass. But you have to believe that. You have to have abundant faith because faith is what moves mountains. It starts with faith. It starts with belief and trust that you'll get out of your situation. If you take small steps towards whatever goal you're trying to achieve, whatever space or state you're trying to get to, you can get there, but it takes time. It takes reaching out to people. So don't be afraid to reach out to someone. Th this could be a life or death situation for you. And I'm, I'm, I'm rooting for your life. I'm rooting for your life. So make the decision to say yes, make the decision to choose life and make the decision to understand that you determine your destiny and you are more than your situation. So that's a, that's a quick remark there. In terms of where you can find me, you can find me at Michael Tabaradi on LinkedIn. You can find me on Facebook with that title. And you can also find me on Instagram. In addition to that, I have four books. My first book being Understand, Reach, Expand, 15 Super Effective Ways to Manage Your Mind. The second book is Desire, The Cornerstone Between Nothing and Success. The third book is Happiness, The Fundamental Keys to Experiencing It Daily. And the fourth book is The Power of Goals. So these books are designed to help you shape your mindset in such a way where you have a go-getter mentality. It doesn't stop you from recognizing the stresses and things that you may experience, but it helps you manage your mindset. And I say manage, not control, because I believe we can manage it. Other works that I do involve training, coaching, and mentorship as well. And you can find more at michaeltubrody.com or masterygroup.com. Thank you very much, Michael. Um, over to you, David. Um, my, my last words uh, to, to every man that's here and is watching, you, you are not alone in this journey. Um, if you speak to other men, you notice that what you are going through is what they are going through. So don't give up. Don't give up on life. Don't take, take your life. Um, most people that we look up to actually went through what everybody goes through. So if only we knew it, it was a matter of time that their season changed. So I, I want to encourage every man uh, that's under the sound of my voice that it's only momentary that you're going through what you're going through. The stress that you're going through is momentary. And as long as you have hope that things will change. It, is it even in the Bible? The Bible talks about hope. We have this hope as an anchor for our souls. And, and we, we, we always uh, talk about the soul being the, the sit bed. Um, that's where you have the mind, the memory, and uh, the emotions. And when, when we have hope, the Bible says it is the anchor for our souls. So when you hope that things are going to change, you will be immovable. You will not give up. So just hope that things are going to change and bounce off ideas with other men. You will notice that they have gone through what you're going through. They are going through the same. And they might even be worse off than where you are. And you discover I was crumbling, but this one is worse off. So let, let, let's bounce off each other. Let, let's interact. Let, let's hang about each other. Um, for the works that I do, um, like I said, um, we, we do counseling. And uh, if you go on liveandcleave.com, leave and cleave, social men leave and cleave. So it's liveandcleave.com. Um, like I said, I'm a pastor for Living Faith. Go to www.livingfaithtemple.com. You will find us there. If you want to physically uh, visit us, you will find us in Kobe. Uh, all the social me me media handles, uh, you, you'll find David Medium there uh, and let's, let's, let's interact.
thanks for hosting us. Thank you very much, David and Michael. Uh, and once again, I'm Benjamin Hamandisha. I've been your host today. Uh, it's been a brilliant conversation, very insightful. Thank you, Michael and David, for your wisdom and taking out your time to share with our viewers. Uh, I've learned a lot and many thanks to uh, Yokai Music and Yokai Matapa, the artist who is the owner of this page where we're sharing uh, information with, you know, it's it's wonderful to have a woman uh, who is who's concerned about the mental well-being of men. I think it, it says a lot about where our community is headed. So keep up the great work that you're doing and to the rest of your team, including Pell, who's also here with us. Thank you for helping and supporting us in the background. Um, I'm Benjamin Amandeshe. Um, the work that I do, I, I do a lot of work around youth leadership and youth mental health support. So you can find me on Facebook, Benjamin Hamandishe, uh, and you can send me a message if you have any young people that you think need help or assisting or mentoring. Uh, I can help in, you know, with our organization called Emerge Now, leading them in the right direction, um, you know, in, 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 in addressing their challenges as well as their future ambitions and goals. But thank you very much. I hope you've all enjoyed today as much as I did. I hope to see you uh, very soon whenever we're invited back on uh, this wonderful page. Uh, we couldn't unpack uh, mental health in its entirety in this hour, but I hope in the few compressed points we had, everyone was able to learn one or two things. But thank you very much. Have a wonderful night and see you soon. Take care.